Have you heard about liraglutide, aka Saxenda or Victoza? Well, today we are going to talk all about it. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Megan. I am a board certified physician in internal medicine, lifestyle medicine, and obesity medicine. And this channel is your trusted source for evidence-based answers to your weight questions. So welcome. Today we are going to talk about liraglutide because we've talked a lot about Munjaro, aka terzepatide, and we've talked a lot about semaglutide, which is also known as Wagovia and Ozempic. But liraglutide is a lesser known player, but really was a very important first step in the GLP-1 agonist category. So I don't think it gets as much attention um, with some good reasons, but let's talk a little bit about it because for some people it is actually a better option in terms of weight loss medication. And as a caveat, of course, whenever I'm talking about weight medication, I'm always talking about medication for those people who feel like their weight is a health problem and who fall into the specific FDA designated categories for approval, meaning a BMI of 27 or above with comorbidities or a BMI of 30 or higher. So liraglutide is also known as Saxenda or Victoza. And as Saxenda, it was the first GLP-1 agonist to be FDA approved for weight loss. The mechanism for liraglutide is basically the same as semaglutide. It is a GLP-1 agonist. It works on the stomach to really slow the transit of food through the stomach and strengthen that message of fullness and decrease appetite, that messaging from the stomach to the brain. It also works in the brain to regulate the energy pathways in terms of energy expenditure, increasing that and decreasing energy storage. Unlike semaglutide, it is a daily injection. So that's a turn off for a lot of people, you know, an injection once a week, people don't have much of a problem with that. But when you change it to every day, even though it is a pen needle, very user friendly, some patients really don't like that concept. Now, liraglutide is around as both Saxenda and Victoza. Victoza is the FDA approved uh, drug for diabetes. It goes up to 1.8 milligrams. Saxenda is the FDA approved medication for weight and it goes up to 3.0 milligrams daily. Now the benefits of liraglutide, uh, one of the benefits is that you can titrate it up quite a bit faster because um, you can go up to the maximum dose in about five weeks, which is great. If you're on Wagovi, it can take several months to get up to that top dose. So it's really nice that you can get up to the highest dose and really start to see what the effects are quite a bit sooner. However, the total body weight loss is not quite as good as semaglutide and certainly not as good as terzepatide. So for liraglutide, people can on average estimate about five to 10% total body weight loss um, by the time they're reaching the maximum effect for that patient. Now, again, as with any of these medications, it is a bell curve. So there's always a couple patients who lose a lot more and there's always patients that don't lose anything or maybe even gain a few pounds on this medication. Now the risks and contraindications are also very similar to semaglutide, but let's go through them in a little bit more detail. So there's always that risk or that warning in terms of patients who have a very specific type of, or, a, or in their family, patients who have, or family members who have um, multiple, multiple endocrine neoplasia, type two, or medullary thyroid carcinoma. For those patients who have a personal history of that or have it in their family, it's not a good fit, but it, that's a very rare uh, set of conditions. Uh, patients who are pregnant or breastfeeding, they should not be on this medication. They shouldn't be on any um, obesity-related medications. That's not a great idea during that time in somebody's life. Um, there's always that theoretical risk of pancreatitis. Um, I think it's, you know, it's also very rare, but good to keep in mind if a patient had a personal history of that, you would definitely want to talk about it. it might not be a good fit for them. Also, Medications like this can transiently increase heart rates. So you want to keep an eye on that. 
Um, it's certainly not as much of an issue as somebody who might be on fentramine, which is really more of a stimulant, but again, something to keep an eye on. And then um, anytime you're on these medications that were originally intended for diabetes, there is always that risk of low blood sugar. So something to keep an eye on as well. Um, some people have a little dizziness, a little fatigue. Some people have um, sensitivity, like skin sensitivity in terms of a rash. Uh, and then anytime you have uh, more rapid weight loss, you are always prone to uh, gallbladder dysfunction. So that's another thing to think about. Um, if you have reflux, again, because you're slowing the transit of the food through the stomach, it could make that worse. Um, but again, with weight loss, actually, a lot of times reflux gets better. So really depends on the person in terms of if they're going to see the benefit of that or not. And then for patients who are on this medication, if they do get dehydrated, it's possible their kidneys may be a little more irritated than they might if they were not on this medication. So my takeaway for loraglutide is sometimes it's a better fit for people than semaglutide or terzepatide. I definitely use it. I don't use it as often, but for some people, it just seems to work a little bit better. They have less side effects. Um, some people certainly have more side effects and a lot of people don't love the fact that it is a daily medication, but I still think it is a great tool to have as our toolbox for treating obesity gets larger and larger, which is such great news. This is one that I am really glad that we still have still works well for people and for the right patient, it can be really, really helpful. So that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, hit the like, subscribe, do all the things. Um, let me know what you'd like to see videos on next and please be well.